I'm Mark Miller, and today we're making manual mode easy. Hey guys, today we're going to break down shooting in manual mode. It can seem like a daunting task, but really it's quite easy once you have a few key concepts down. There are three main components. You've got aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. So let's start with aperture. Aperture is the opening in your lens that controls how much light passes through the camera sensor. Aperture is also how you control the depth of field in your image, or in other words, what's in focus and what is not. This is how you achieve those soft, blurry backgrounds when shooting the portraits. The faster the aperture or smaller the f-stop number, like 1.8 or 2.8, it's going to allow more light to pass through to the lens and creates a shallow depth of field for a blurry background, also referred to as bokeh. A slower aperture or larger f-stop number, like 5.6, 8, or 11, is going to reduce the amount of light that's able to pass through and create a larger depth of field, keeping more of your image in focus. Seems kind of backwards, but just remember, the smaller the f-stop number, the bigger the opening, and the larger the number, the smaller the opening. Be sure to stick around to the end where I demonstrate some live shooting with models to visually make sense of all this. Now second, we have the shutter speed. And that's the length of time that the camera shutter is open, allowing light to reach the sensor. A fast shutter speed will freeze motion as the shutter is only open for fractions of a second. And a slow shutter speed keeps the shutter open for a longer duration, allowing light in, and it can create some motion blur. In some cases, when used correctly, it can create some exciting and creative images, but trying to keep a sharp image handheld with slower shutter speeds can be challenging or even impossible. I typically would recommend staying around 1 60th of a second. It's probably the slowest you'll want to shoot handheld. ISO is the last piece of the puzzle, and it determines how sensitive your sensor is to light, which helps brighten your image. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive it will be, making your image brighter. But it does come with a cost, and that is your image will have noise or become grainy looking. So that's typically the last thing you'll want to adjust to get your exposure right. It does become necessary in certain situations, like shooting indoors with low light. But if you can, you'll want to leave it at your base setting for your camera, which is typically around 100 or 200, depending on your camera. The way I like to use manual mode is to determine my aperture first based on what I'm shooting because it's responsible for the depth of field and that's going to have the greatest overall impact on how my image is going to look. If I'm shooting portraits, I want a shallow depth of field so I set my aperture to 1.8 or 2.8 so I can separate my subject from the background. But if I'm shooting landscapes, I want a large depth of field so I have as much of my scene in focus with a lot of detail so I usually set my aperture somewhere around f11. After that, I'm going to adjust my shutter speed to get my correct exposure, and I leave my ISO at the base value or lowest setting. So how do you know that you put all the pieces together for a correct exposure now? Well, you're going to see this little meter or something similar on your camera. And when the arrow is to the right, it means you're overexposed or too bright. And when the arrow is over on the left, it means you're underexposed or too dark. You need to adjust the shutter speed or aperture to get your arrow into the middle or zero. Once you do this, your camera is going to be properly exposed for the light in your scene based on what the camera is seeing. Now there may be occasions where you might want to underexpose or overexpose based on the exact light or look that you want, but this is going to give you the tools to get started shooting in manual mode and you'll be out of auto. Alright, so we're set up outside now to do a quick demonstration on how to shoot in manual mode. I've got my two daughters here to help out, so let's get started. All right, we're gonna start off with a single person portrait. When I'm shooting a single person, I like to have a nice wide aperture, something like 2.8, so I can get that blurry background and really separate my subject. As you can see, I've got an aperture of 2.8 and a shutter speed of 50th of a second with an ISO of 200. I'm, un I'm a little bit overexposed, so I need to bring the meter to zero to uh, balance out the exposure. So now I've got shutter speed of 100th of a second and the meter is at zero, so we're ready to take the first shot. As you can see, we've got our subject clearly in focus, nice soft background with a proper exposure. But what happens if you've got two people or a group of people when you're taking a photo? Now we're gonna take a picture of both my daughters here 
and see what happens with the same settings. As you can see now, we've got one person sharp and in focus, the other one's a little bit soft and blurry because their heads are on a different plane. So we need to get a wider aperture so we can get a greater depth of field. So I'm gonna adjust my aperture to 4.5, but now I'm underexposed, so I need to adjust my shutter speed to accommodate. So now I'm at 40th of a second, aperture 4.5, and we've got an even exposure. So let's go ahead and take that second shot. Now you can see that we've got both of our subjects clearly in focus and we got a, great, a greater depth of field by adjusting our aperture. So what happens if you're taking pictures of your kids playing in the yard or your pets running around or action sports? You need to have a really fast shutter speed to freeze motion. Earlier I said 1 60th of a second was as slow as I would go to shoot handheld, but that's when I'm shooting something like a landscape that's not gonna move. So I gotta get a faster shutter speed now so we can freeze motion. We're gonna go ahead and adjust the aperture to 3.2 and speed up our shutter speed to 60th of a second. Let's take that first shot and see what happens now. As you can see, we've got some motion blur and wasn't fast enough shutter speed. So we really need to get up to somewhere around 320th of a second or greater. And in order to do that, we're gonna to have to raise our ISO now. So I'm changing my ISO to, we're gonna go with about a thousand. And you can see that we're overexposed by a little over two stops. So we're gonna speed up our shutter speed now. And we got 320th of a second. So let's go ahead and take that shot. As you can see, we were able to freeze motion there and we got the shot that we wanted. So aperture, shutter speed, and ISO are all key factors in balancing your exposure and they all gonna have a little bit of a trade-off and give and take. So depending on what your subject is and what your goal is, is gonna determine which one you need to adjust to get the shot that you want. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a like. And if you have any follow-up questions, leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them for you. And I'll see you in the next one. So let's get started. I'll be like. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Okay, that was cheesy. <laughs> That's what I'll say. <laughs>